The snow finally melted a few weeks ago, and we're in the warm embrace of spring. The chickens are doing well. However, I've been trying to figure out a way to keep them from laying their eggs on the floor directly under the nest boxes. My latest trick is to use a strip of LED lights that I turn on early in the morning. Since chickens prefer dark secluded places to lay their eggs, I was hoping this would work. Unfortunately, they outsmarted me again. There were fewer eggs under the nest boxes, but instead they had just moved to another corner of the coop. I'm almost ready to give up and just let them have their way. Maybe that's actually the wisest thing to do. It's been four weeks now since I hurt my back and I'm still limping around. However, it's a huge improvement to how it used to be when I could hardly get out of bed in the morning. I think all the farm chores have actually helped me recover, as it's forced me to stay active and move around. The cattle also seem to be enjoying the fact that spring has finally sprung. In a few weeks, the grass is long enough to graze. They'll be led out into the meadows and pastures that have rested through the winter. So it's spring, finally. The snow melted yesterday. Uh, it's crazy that yesterday morning we had maybe five or six centimeters of snow and now everything's gone. It's really nice and warm in here and the plan is to uh, eventually move the tomatoes in here. That's why I'm sort of watering the, the old bedding. This is the old straw bed from the layers that used to be in here. And uh, I haven't done anything to it except for raking it up into uh, some, you know, piles or like some beds. And now I'm just watering this whole area. So to get sort of the biology going, I want it to start breaking down uh, a little bit. And we'll p maybe probably make some compost, lay, lay, have a layer of compost on top. And then uh, plant the tomatoes right in there. But uh, the tomatoes are only about this big right now, so um, 
it's gonna be a few more weeks maybe even up to a month before we can uh, actually um, you know plant them out here so but this feels this feels fun I'm happy to see this it's gonna be interesting to see what kind of soil we get from this but I mean premium quality it should be really excellent This will be the first time I try my new feed system of emptying the chicken feed from the silo that I recently moved indoors to the grey bin I keep down by the chickens. If all the height measurements are correct and the hatch opens, this will be a huge improvement to my feeding routine.
So this is incredible. What a day. So it's Monday the 8th of uh, April and uh, definitely the second day of spring I would say today is. Yesterday was very nice but today we're having uh, about I think it's 13, 12 to 13 degrees Celsius. Uh, the grass is greening up. I can see huge difference just compared to yesterday. Maybe this is spring for real this time. Let's hope so at least. So what I'm gonna do today is uh, load the, a big um, container, fill it with uh, some of our manure from the pile that's been composting. So, some tractor work today. Before I can get to work, however, my kids wanted me to help them make a shield they could use when they were playing outside.
The container is full and will be picked up the following day to be added to another compost pile and sold to local gardeners. The manure pile has composted nicely since I added the tarp for protection. I'm finding lots of earthworms and nematodes and centipedes and different kinds of mushrooms and actinomycete bacteria all busy decomposing and breaking down the manure and straw to a beautiful rich compost. It really is magical to witness. Since a few weeks back, I've started feeding the ewes some supplements on top of their silage. The long period with only unfertilized meadow hay has helped them get through winter, but now I realize they need a little bit better feed to improve their condition before we let them out on grass. I realized this a few weeks ago, when my sheep shearer U1 was here to shear the ewes. After having done 5 out of the 70, he stopped and told me that the wool was too difficult to shear, as it was not falling off easily, and the shear machine was getting stuck in the wool. Since protein is the driver of the condition of their wool, this is a clear sign to me that their feed was a little bit insufficient. Had they gotten more protein during the past months, their winter wool would have easily fallen off when sheared, as they had plenty of energy for the summer wool growth to start under the winter wool. This is a valuable lesson for me. Even after more than 10 years having sheep, I'm still learning and tweaking my care of these wonderful animals. Spring comes my wife's and I eagerness to once again start gardening. Today we are clearing the potato bed, trying to turn the soil as little as possible. Mostly clearing off old growth and harvesting any small potatoes 
that have managed to survive the winter. The spinach, salad and radishes we sowed in compost on top of cardboard about a week ago hasn't come up yet. But it's like they say, patience is the gardener's most valuable tool. New morning, and it's time to feed the horses. So it's now been about three weeks since my sheep shearer Yu Wan was here trying to shear the ewes. Now he's here again, but this time we're shearing the rams. All in all I have 17 rams under one year old and 12 fully grown. The lambs haven't been sheared at all, and the rams were last sheared almost exactly a year ago. The wool is coming off real nice, much thanks to their good shape and condition as I've been feeding them a small ration of supplement grain throughout the winter. The result of another hard lesson learned two years ago, when I didn't feed my rams extra supplement and their condition was poor at the end of the winter season. Farming really is a series of small wins and minor failures. Just like life, you cannot have one without the other. An old farmer once said that if you go to bed at night not having failed during the day, you simply haven't tried hard enough. There is definitely some truth to this, as the inevitable collection of life experiences we can gather living this way leaves a deep and profound humbling and gratifying feeling. This is the result of having broken free from knowledge into the heart of wisdom, where we see that perfection in life is not only unattainable, but also undesirable. We all need to move through life learning how to fail gracefully, making our mistakes, take the lessons learned, get back up, and keep living.
So, it's uh, 5.30, Friday afternoon, and uh, we just finished cheering the rams. So, that's, a, that's good, that's a weight off my mind. Yeah, four times a year we do this whole procedure, and uh, Yuan does this almost every day, you know, shearing the sheep, but he has the support thing. This is really, yeah, pretty heavy on my body. I can feel that I'm 42 and not really in the best shape, maybe. I should do some more exercises and strengthen my body, but um, it went okay. Yeah, the rams are in good shape. You one was happy. The wool was coming off really nicely, almost like butter. And uh, they're nice and round, good shape. So we're very happy. I'm really tired. Oh, I need to give the ewes some um, some supplement feed now, and then I'm gonna go inside and have a Friday evening with the family.